In the city, war declared on scaffolding, crowding, and closing sidewalks, sometimes staying up for years as well. So should landlords be forced to take the scaffolding down if no work is being done? CBS2 political reporter Marsha Kramer with the story. Scaffolding cloaking city buildings is as much a part of the landscape as Times Square, Central Park, and yellow cabs. But unlike taxis, there's no meter running on how long the so-called street sheds are allowed to remain. And some are up for a very, very long time. City Councilman Ben Kalos is seeking a new law that imposes time limits. 90 days for landlords to fix a dangerous condition, and 90-day extension if needed. The sidewalk sheds are the guests that you invite to your home but never leave. The councilman is particularly upset about this scaffolding right here. It's been up since 2006. That's a decade. Oh, and by the way, it's where the city department of buildings is located. The department of buildings says it's not its job to fix the building. It's managed by another city agency. They claim most scaffolding is necessary to protect pedestrians. Only 2% could safely be removed, they say. The councilman says residents have other safety concerns. They're concerned about the the fact that it attracts homeless who might sleep there for the night instead of being in a shelter. They are concerned about uh, urine that collects under these sheds and also criminal activity. The scaffolding at 1772 Second Avenue has been up for six years. It's filled with graffiti and pigeon droppings. Why is it sitting there? It makes the street look ugly. Don't like it. It's a uh, eyesore. But Frank Ricci of the Rent Stabilization Association, a landlord group, says the scaffolding is left up to protect pedestrians until landlords can get the money to make repairs. If the sidewalk shed's not there and something falls off and someone gets hurt, we're going to be all very upset. For the record, there are 7,700 buildings in the city with scaffolding, 300 miles of street sheds. I'm Marcia Kramer, CBS 2 News.